Today we're making guacamole, and I'm wearing my avocado shirt. We are making fajitas at home, chicken fajitas, and we've actually already browned off or seared off some of our chicken. And we'll finish that in a saute pan. But I get a lot of questions about making guacamole, and sometimes you hear people say, oh, I went to X restaurant, Rosa Mexicana, or Rio Grande, and they have the best guacamole. Well, guacamole is not difficult to make. It's essentially just three ingredients, salt, some liquid to uh, acidulate the, uh, the avocados that are brown. In our case, it's going to be lime, and the avocado itself. And we'll show you how we, how we do that at our house. Avocados are considered a superfood because of their um, healthy fat content, as well as their uh, high potassium and uh, fiber content. When you buy an avocado, it should be slightly squishy, not squishy, but slightly give to the touch. Uh, and that's when you know your avocado is ripe. If your avocado is not ripe, what you can do is uh, place that in a paper bag with either a banana or more avocados and the ethylene gas that's being given off by the banana or the avocados uh, being uh, contained within the paper bag will uh, hasten the ripening of it. Um, of our three avocados, this one's a little mushy, I'm sorry to say. I'm sorry, this one's a little mushy. We'll see what happens, what it looks like when we open it up. But the interesting thing about avocados is that they've, they've actually seemed to have come down in price. And, and, and in spite of a lot of other groceries increasing in price, uh, you can buy an avocado for just a little bit over a dollar. This was, um, these avocados today in our grocery store were uh, four avocados for um, five dollars. Uh, to prepare an avocado, I simply cut off the top. and then slice it around north to south and then twist it. Invariably you'll have one side that has the seed and one side that doesn't. To remove the seed, and do this carefully of course, you simply take your knife and give it a good whack into the seed like that and then give it a twist. And the seed should pop out. And then to remove the seed, just squeeze carefully on both sides of the knife, and the pit will fall off, and you won't get cut. Set that aside and do the other two. This was a squishy one. Let's see how meat of this avocado is. We may have to dodge some of the more ripe parts. Eh, looks pretty good. Now that our avocados are pitted, we'll just simply scoop out the interior dodging any brown parts or parts that look sinewy. And the avocado pops out pretty easily because the skins are tough enough to uh, prevent the spoon from piercing them. You simply go around the edges These avocado skins also make great compost. What we do sometimes um, when we're making guacamole is, if we're not having tacos, but just guac, we'll actually make our own tortilla chips. And that's simply taking some corn chips or corn uh, tortillas and cutting them into triangles and then deep frying them uh, in a deep fryer. 
until they uh, essentially brown up and then we drain them and salt them and they taste terrific and they're a heck of a lot cheaper than chips on the uh, chips you buy from the grocery store. This device here is my secret weapon for making guacamole. One of the things that some people fear when they make the guac is how do I mash it? And a lot of people you see, especially in restaurants, they'll use forks or a couple of knives. Um, some who want a really, really smooth guac will actually do it in a blender or a, uh, a mixer. Um, this is a more delicate way of handling it with a very inexpensive tool. This is a pastry cutter. Um, I'm not sure how much these cost, but I imagine they're inexpensive. It's been a long time since I've used it. But it essentially is a way of getting leverage uh, and hitting the guac from the top, or the avocados from the top. And because it's got four blades, it makes quick work. And then we can adjust the texture, whether we like it coarse or fine, uh, based on how much time we spend mashing this up. Much like bananas, our avocado will start to brown and turn off um, as it reacts to oxygen in the air. And so what we must do is add an acidulating agent. Yes, that's your SAT word of the day. It simply means add something acidic to retard the browning of the guac. Um, some people use lemon, some people use vinegar. We're going to use some lime because we like the flavor. And this is just half a lime. Um, and we're just going to squeeze that. We have a lemon reamer that we're using to help extract all the juice. And this will help keep the guac looking fresh for multiple hours and also give it a nice uh, citrusy flavor reminiscent of, in my view, um, South America. And then we're not going to final finish salting it, but we're going to put a healthy pinch of salt in here right now. And a few grinds of black pepper because I like it. Now for the mashing. Slowly take each half and penetrate it with the pastry cutter or cut it with the pastry cutter. And then simply turn the bowl while you mash against the edges or the sides of this bowl until you get the consistency you like. And with good ripe avocados, this should not take more than a half a minute. And there's our guac, and we'll taste it for salt. That tastes pretty good. So, again, to review, this was actually just three avocados, half a lime, and enough salt to make it flavorful and some pepper if you'd like. Makes an excellent guac, sure to, to beat the heck out of any restaurant guac, uh, and it's dirt cheap at uh, probably less than $3.50 or $4 uh, for a considerable amount of guacamole that we're going to enjoy on our fajitas tonight.